So in this video we're going to be talking about how to create a height map um, using processing. And it's kind of a two-parter in this video. Um, so the first part we will be using um, gray channels or the gray channel. So um, just um, one value in RGB to create a height map that looks like the one right there. And then in the second video, we're going to be making a 3D rendering of it. First, start with um, opening the processing um, environment. And once we open it, we're going to um, start writing the setup function. Um, and again, void is kind of the syntax for void. Setup is a syntax for function. And um, we have setup, and we don't need the draw because in this um, example, we're we're only going to be um, doing the code once. We don't need it to um, keep uh, drawing repeatedly. So we're going to make a size or a canvas. Um, we're going to make it 800 by 800, and um, we don't need a background, so we're just going to run it. And you can see it makes a generic gray background for um, the program. So, and it's um, 800 pixels by 800 um, pixels high and wide. And we'll talk about what we need to do in the program. This is my illustration of um, the canvas that we just created. And there's nothing really special about it, it has a generic background, and we want to add pixels to it. So we're going to be doing a um, kind of nested loop, nested for loop, which means a for loop inside of another for loop. And um, this way, so the first thing we'll do is create a pixel um, from at um, x, position, x position 0, y position 0, so um, all the way to the top left, and it'll be drawn, and we're also going to fill it with um, a, a grayscale color from 0 to 255, so it could be any color in between. So there's uh, 256 um, choices you can choose from, of colors. And then we draw the next one, and we go uh, all the way across the canvas until um, we reach the, the width of the canvas. Then we start drawing down. So then we draw down and we continue this process until the whole canvas is filled. Now with um, an 800 by 800 canvas, and if we make the rectangles one pixel each, it's gonna be 800 times 800 pixels for um, rectangles drawn. And um, so the, the width is 800, the height is 800. Now we want to add a variable so that we can change the scale of the image. Basically the size of the rectangles. And a way to do that is just to make a variable, we'll call it um, SCL standing for scale, and we'll make it 400 in this case. It takes up half the distance between 800, um, so you're only going to have four um, rectangles drawn, and we this scale, and um, we want to make two other kind of variables, and this um, called columns and rows that they determine how far across we go before updating, how far across like x y's before we um, go down a step and draw all the way across again, you know, how many steps that and how many steps y-wise you go until you are done with the program. And um, it fills the whole canvas area. And a way to do that and kind of illustrate that is you start at the starting point, 0 comma 0, for x, uh, x equals 0, y equals 0, and then you go to the next um, position. And um, we're just moving along the x-axis right now. And then you go to the next position. And we reach the um, very end of the um, x position, so now we go down one. 
and you kind of keep doing this and keep doing this until we fill up the screen. Um, now we have to talk about um, wh what we want to actually calculate for that. So take for example the height is um, 800 and this is determining how many columns we have. So if we have 800 columns and the scale we'll say is 1. We're going to need um, it's going to be 800 divided by 1, so each pixel is 1, so we need 800 rows to reach the bottom. Now, we can change the scale here, and it will automatically change the amount of columns based on um, how we are writing it. So we're writing as height divided by scale. And the same thing with rows. Let's say for rows we have um, 80 is our scale, and rows... Um, like we're determining how many rows do you need before we have to update the Y position. And a simple way of doing this is looking at um, width is 800. If our scale is 80, we're going to need 10 rows. So that's how you solve this process. And now we'll go back to the code. So now that we're back, um, we want to declare some variables. Um, the variables that we, I talked about previously and now we have to um, declare them before initializing them. And so we, we um, declare um, coals and rows as an integer and we um, declare scale as an integer. There are integers because we only want um, full numbers because you can't have half a pixel. Um, Scale, we're also um, initializing it there, and you can initialize it there, but we can't do that for col um, coals and rows because coals and rows need um, the other values of height and width. So then we get, so those are kind of defined when we create the canvas using the size function. So we made them um, coals equals height divided by scale, rows equals width divided by scale. Now we're going to start on our for loop. And um, we're writing for the integer um, y equals zero. We're just you know making a y value here because you can you can declare a variable in a for loop, and but it's a local variable, so it can only be used within that for loop. And um, so it equals zero, and then y is greater than columns, and then y plus plus. So. And then it's a nested for loop because here we have another for loop inside, and this is the um, the, the x loop. And we're using rows instead of columns, of course, x plus plus. And the reason we have y's first and then x is because um, you first go all the way across, and then you go down one, and you continue that process. If we had it the opposite way you would actually go all the way down and then go over one um, by the x position. And that's not how it works. So now we just want to see it works. So we're filling it up um, with red. So RGG, RGB, so 255, 00. Just see if it works. We're adding a no stroke. And now we're just going to write a rectangle and draw a rectangle. And it's a rectangle x, uh, y, by the size. You might consider, what is the size? Well, the size is, um, every pixel is just the size of the scale. So it's just scale, scale. And this uh, wouldn't really work because you also have to do x times the scale. And um, y times the scale. Because... And you could even make columns. Um, so now that that works, let's run it. There we go. It ran. You, it's all filled up. If we added, uh, if we had a stroke, you would see every single um, rectangle being drawn because you would have a black outline. But we don't. Um, we're not including a stroke. And now we're going to take that off because we don't want color. We just want a kind of mono um, grayscale value so we're just gonna make it let's see what happens if you just make everyone just a random between uh, 255 so it just chooses between 0 and 255 random fill 
Um, the scale is one, so that's why you can see that it's so grainy. And it looks like um, an old TV, kind of something like that. And the scale, so we could, um, to see it more clearly, we can make it 200, the scale, so every pixel is 200 wide. Um, and there we go, so you can see that it has different pixels of different colors. And just to see that, how they interact with each other, um, you can see. But it isn't drawing it very smoothly. And if you want a terrain, you want it to look more, more cloudy-ish. More like there is a pattern that, um, the kind of, so you don't go from pure black to pure white. You have a little bit of gray in the middle to kind of separate that. And that's kind of what we have to consider. And the way we're going to be doing it is by first copying this loop because we're going to be initializing it. Uh, initializing color in one loop and then we'll be displaying the value in another loop and I'm just taking off that because we will have another different color value there and we're gonna make a two-dimensional array and this is the syntax for making it so float um, bracket close bracket um, bracket close bracket and then we're just gonna call it color and we're not calling it um the word color because color is actually like a a variable defined in processing so we'll just call it color with a u um and this will initialize it down here because we also want to initialize it with a um we also want to initialize it with a um um with the columns and the rows and i'm going to switch this again so I I'm gonna change this right here because I actually want it rows and columns but it doesn't matter because it's actually um the same it's the same thing like columns and rows is the same number because you're just making a square value and we took off the um stuff for um filling and re rectangle and now we're going to um kind of show our um the value. So we're going to make it color X and Y and this will make it so um, every X and Y will have a unique um, will have a unique color um, on it. So and then we're using Perlin noise function and this is a function to make a more well-defined more um, kind of modular scenes that look a lot more organic and we're mapping it. And what the map function does is Perlin noise, um, it, its values are range from zero to one. And you can see we're making the base zero, it ranges from zero and one. And map allows you to change that. So now we wanna make it, instead of zero from one, we wanna make it, the number is range from zero to 255. Cause that's what you use for um, writing colors. And now after we got that done, fill, we can also add um, the two-dimensional array we just kind of um, calculated for the color. So now we add color um, bracket X um, bracket Y and we should be able to run it. And now you can see it looks a lot a little better. We can increase the size so Again, it looks a little random, and the reason it looks kind of random and doesn't look super uniform is because the noise value is so um, is so broad because it's going from straight. It wants small um, kind of differences in um, x and y for the noise function. So what we could do is just make a different variable, and we'll um, do float y offset equals zero. And we're placing it above there because we want it to start above the loops for um, each for each for loop that um, thing. And then we'll after every x um, loop, we'll change the offset by a little bit by a small margin. And what the noise does is it creates like a random series of 
zero and ones, but like kind of close to each other. And the closer you make your value, so the smaller you make your value here, a value here will make it more, um, it will make it, they'll have, there'll be more space in between. It'll make it a lot flatter of a kind of terrain. And we also added the Y offset and we're just um, putting the variable names in. Instead of um, X and Y, we have X offset, Y offset. Now when you run it, you can see it looks a lot smoother. Um, and the kind of shade kind of, it doesn't go from white to black suddenly. It goes from white to darker um, white to even darker white. And then eventually to black. And now you can see it's working. And you can change these values. So you can change them to reflect um, different numbers. And I wanted to add another variable here, uh, make it a float. And I wanted to add a variable that that you can change the how much it's offset by. Because I don't want to change it two times every single time. I need to. Um, I want to change it. So we'll call it scale, and we'll just make it 0 0.01. And we can take those off and replace it with scale. So. After doing that, you run it again, it should work, it looks good, but we're also, we can change the value, we'll make it a little bigger, and you can see it's a lot more, um, more rough, and you can make it smaller and make it smoother. So here we made it even bigger, and it's even more rough. Now we'll change it back to... 0.01 run it and you can see it looks a lot good and you can also change the scale again so you can change how many pixels uh, or the pixel size so if you want a more an image that looks a little bit um, more pixelated you can do that so I'm just going to change it back to one and now we want to kind of save it and I'm just going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it um, height map and now we haven't still solved the, the problem we wanted to do we wanted to generate an image of a height map, not just make it and then we just have it so what you, there is a um, function called save and you give it a name in a string format meaning a um, format that has um, parentheses around it and you give it a file kind of designation and we'll call it, we'll give it a JPEG and it can hold, um, do multiple files and once you run it, it creates this and that's good and all but now when you go to sketch, um, show sketch folder and it'll actually make an image of what you just um, displayed on the screen and that's good and that that's perfect because that's what we need for our next um, part when we actually display it um, we, we grab an image and we uh, make it into a, a rendered 3d rendered height map. so again you go to show um, you go to show folder you go to the folder you have to go to so thank you and watch part two